2024 has thrown up some magnificent golf offerings for the mid to high handicap golfer. In today's video, I'm gonna go through my top five hollow bodied irons for everyone at home who thinks they could potentially help their game. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson. Welcome back to this YouTube channel. Guys, make sure you do hit that subscribe button if you enjoy daily golf related videos. Now let's cut to the chase. In at number five, we have an offering which isn't new for 2024. In fact, not many of these irons are, except for number one. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But at number five, I have the Ping i525. I can never get that right. i5, I got it right. The Ping i525 irons. These are, of course, a forged hollow bodied iron. That's what this video is all about. But they also feature a ballistic face. For me, ballistic is like a military term for, is that right, Bobby? Balli missile, missiles and stuff. So let's send some missiles. We have the A tie in here, and I actually really like how these look. That's why they're in the top five. There's so many offerings that you could see from different brands, Callaway, TaylorMade, Ping, Mizuno, PXG, and they can't all get in the top five actually. So I think these look really, really good down at the ball. They look spectacular. They don't look too big actually, and performance wise, you can actually really start to get some good distance out of there with that ballistic face. They also feature, see 158 yards there for an A-tie, and that's just a long, long way. All these irons do go a long way, to be fair. That's what they're about. They're about distance, they're about forgiveness. They're not about control and spin rate. I'll hold my hands up there. So for me, I couldn't really use almost any of these, except for what's in at number one, potentially, which I might do, but I'm not too sure yet. They also feature a Hydra Pearl 2.0 finish. Now, you may think, that's purely just for good looks, but it's not. It actually has a benefit where it kind of gets moisture away from the grooves, so potentially you don't get as many flyers out the rough. So here on the Golf Sound system, we do have rough, we have bunkers, we have all sorts of different lines we can go off. So potentially, not that there's any moisture in here unless it's rained overnight, but you should get more consistency time after time after time. I've hit that so badly, and that's pitched bang next to the other ball. Still gone 160 yards, which is quite frightening. So the one thing that I think lets this down and why potentially the I-525s, I-525, I don't know how you're supposed to say it, why they're not higher up in the ranking for me is that feel and sound. Although they do feature a forged face, they don't feel that good. You can probably hear, I mean, I'm using TP5Xs here, so they are quite hard golf balls, but you just don't really get, I mean, it's consistent, isn't it? You don't really get that nice feel that you do get with some of the other irons that are in this video. So guys, comment below what irons are in your top five potential mid to high handicap irons for 2024. Number five is the ping. Calm down, just calm down. How are you enjoying your job? I am dead inside. So guys, in at number two, we have an iron which, every iron for me has a reason why it's in here. And these have, probably 500 reasons, because that's about how much they cost. These are the Tacoma 101T irons. You can tell my mind is running through all the irons we have here today. But for me, I really enjoy these. They feel really good. They're a hollow bodied iron with a tungsten weighted in there. They don't profess to have too much technology in there. We've actually got the seven iron here. And for me, a seven iron of this ilk and of this loft, I would anticipate maybe a 165 to 170 carry. And these actually feel better than the ping irons. And that's one of the reasons why I try to kind of put them in position, 165 carry, 173 total. Consistency is always gonna be key with golf clubs like this. And if you can stand there and you know you can hit a shot that spins at 5,000 or 6,000, depending where you hit it out of this face, then generally you're doing okay. The 101T was a reborn version of the 101, the 101 being the first iron that Tacoma ever made, the big hollow bodied, more forgiving. Probably the iron that you would go if you were the higher handicap or the, the golf that struggled with ball striking a little bit more. But I think this is a really nice blade length. It's a really kind of sleeker top line. And I, re I could see myself gaming these. I really could. Consistency wise, that's 160, a little bit short that time going 168 total. Again, spinning at 5.3, so all these irons are gonna be slightly lower spin than potentially a set of blades or even a set of CBs because of the hollow bodied properties that they do feature. And I think if you can get a set of irons that feel really nice, they have quality, the words absolutely lost me for what they are. Quality, come on Bobby, that's why. You, quality components. They have quality components in them for the price and obviously then they have 
a forged hollow bodied head. So realistically, I've absolutely ripped that one. You're not gonna get much better value for money unless you delve into the second hand market. That one's gone miles, by the way. And again, you'll see that consistency for me isn't as tight knit as maybe it would be with a standard forged head with these, because to be honest, I could stand here and I could hit these as hard as I want all day. And I feel like I'm gonna get a level of forgiveness, but I'm also gonna get a level of, well, it just feels really, really nice. That'll be about a 170 again, I would imagine. 166 going up to 175. That's in at number five of my, number five, that's in at number four of my top five players for giving mid-handicap, high-handicap irons. Let's have a look at number three. Now, it would not be a hollow-bodied iron without this club, would it, Bobby? No. What club is it, though? Number three, it's the TaylorMade P790, Bobby. And the thing with this is, I could have had the 770 in there. I probably should have the 770 in here. For me, I think a blended set between the TaylorMade P790 and P770 is a fantastic way to go for anybody who wants just a nice set that progressively gets a little bit shorter because we've got a iron. We've got the a iron here of the P790 and I like it. It's a little bit big. It's a tiny, tiny bit clumbersome, but that's why the 770 is here. The 770 was really designed to be the little brother of the 790. The 790 for me was the club that brought hollow bodied irons to the world. I'd take my hat off to TaylorMade, but my haircut day is tomorrow and it's really not good under there. It's looking a bit like Bobby's hair actually. But let's see, eight iron, these really do start to blend everything you want with a hollow body iron. You get the forgiveness, you get the performance, you get the feel, you get the sound. Do I want my eight iron to go 150 yards bang straight? Yes, I do. Do I want it to spin more than five and a half? Yes, I would. So again, that's why potentially there's better offerings for the lower handicap out there. But consistency wise, again, I pulled that, that's gonna go like 160 yards. Really, really enjoyable clubs, really, really enjoy. It's, you know what, that's done really well again. And I think TaylorMade almost has to be in this video for the reputation alone and for the fact that they started it. They are the OGs realistically of hollow bodied irons. But what is in at number two? What reckons at number two? I have no idea. He's got no idea, he's got no idea. It's not time for number two yet, is it? Because we have a special guest today. We have a special feature. We couldn't talk about the TaylorMade P790 without talking about this. The hollow bodied iron that has rocked the golfing world. So much so TaylorMade actually took out a lawsuit against them. This is the eight iron, the same as the 790 that we've just been hitting. And I think for value, there's a bit of a storm over the Kirkland golf clubs at the moment because of what TaylorMade have, have kind of done with them and stuff. But I think once that all gets sorted out and they, Kirkland pay them whatever they've sued them for or whatever, value wise, like to be fair, these don't look as good on top as any of the other irons that we've spoken about. But then apart from the Tacomos, they're in a totally different budget, aren't they? So realistically here, I'm not too sure who the target audience is for these and the fact that you can't get them at the moment. I don't think they're restocking for obvious reasons, but let's see how it goes. We'll compare it against the 790 as a bit of a, a bonus. It's exactly the same as the last shot we just hit. And it's actually gonna go a little bit further as you can see. So 161 yards carry. I imagine that's gonna spin at five and a half again, five two. So again, a low spin club, which it's gonna be, especially if you have um, the ball striking abilities that I have. That felt so good though. And you know, for $499, if you want a set of new clubs, these are probably going to be up there when the lawsuit ends and when you can get them and things like that. So really, really interesting. I wanted to throw that in. For me, they're probably not going to be in the top five just because they're not as consistent. I've tested these quite a lot. I've gone and played with them and you get shots that go a long way and shots that don't go a long way. But for me, I think for the price, I'd probably go to Coma anyway, but for the price, these have to be said. Do you know what's at number two? No idea. He's got no idea. Number two could quite easily be number one, but it's not because number one is a little bit better than number two. But number two, it's the Cobra Forge Tech Irons. Now these aren't the first gen, these are the second generation Forge Tech Irons. They actually do them in black, which look incredible. I'll put those on screen now, or Bobby will, because he's gonna be very busy. But looking at these, these feature, obviously the Forge hollow body technology. They also feature a foam insert. It's all good after what I've just been talking about, but that's designed to enhance the feel and the sound of these clubs. And for me, it really, really does. I think looking down at them, a mid handicapper could use these, a low handicapper could use these, a high handicapper could probably sneak these in the bag. They also have the Forge Tech X irons, which are the bigger irons, 
and they're definitely designed more for the kind of higher handicapper. When they did redefine the shape of these from the first generation, the, the idea was to make them smaller and more defined because Cobra knew the Forge Tech X was coming, which was the bigger, more cumbersome iron. So it makes a lot of sense, and I really like what Cobra have done with that. Almost, again, similar to the P770 or the Tacoma 101T, but feel-wise, there's not a lot on the market that can kind of rival this. We've got the six iron here. That six iron's got 192 yards in the air, 202. I mean, these are rocket ships and that's still spun at four and a half. So realistically for a six iron, four and a half is closer to kind of that number on the bottom than potentially we've been having with some of the other clubs. So realistically there, really, really enjoyable, really, really nice clubs. You can get these a little bit cheaper now as well because they have been out just a little bit. They've been out probably almost a year hit that so hard by the way just turn it over again that is obviously me more than the club that one's flown 200 has it oh 194 very very consistent again i'm working on my game actually i'm trying to get my wrist in a better position at the top to stop hitting that left shot but again that's nearly spun at 5,000. really enjoyable really nice kind of mid to thick top line which i think if you are a mid handicap or a high handicap golfer again you may think of a blended set of these cobras if that's what you decide to go for obviously you're going to go and get fitted for them if you're spending the money on them but in at number two is the cobra forge tech irons that's the shot i want bobby big high fade it's not going to go as far if it might go as far it's got 192 yards carry spinning at 5,000. there's not a lot of golfers in the world that shouldn't just be using these to be honest right number one do you know what's at number one Right, number one, elephant in the room, I haven't got them here. They're that good, I lent them to a good jolly old friend of mine, Gary Martin, and he still has them. But in at number one, it's the PXG 0311T irons. They're absolutely fantastic, as Gary Barlow once said. I absolutely love these clubs. I love what they stand for. I love that they haven't just gone, you know what, tailor-made P770s, they dominate the market. Cobra Forge Tech, they're fantastic. We don't want to try and go up against them. And that's exactly what this brand has done. I think these are fantastic irons because yes, they're hollow bodied. They're not overly strong lofted, but you still get that sense of workability and that sense of achievement when you hit a shot like that, go on, get towards that flag. Let's Guys, see. we are of course talking about the PXG 0317T forged irons. These for me are outstanding looking. They are full of technology. They aren't the cheapest of iron, which is why I've said they are the best overall iron. But for me, I love what PXG are doing with these clubs. If you haven't tried them and you are in the market for a set of hollow bodied players yet forgiving iron that I think you owe it to yourself to go and try them and especially go through the fitting process because the PXG fitting process is ultimately second to none.